Hi, welcome to a short video on how to run the pre-closing verification report, also known as the CLOPA in Sage X3. In this video, I will be showing you how to run the report and how to navigate some of the errors which may appear. To start, navigate to the sitemap, scroll down to printouts, printouts, and then printouts. Use the left list to identify the report. Under report code, enter CLOPA. After selecting your report, let's fill in the parameter definition to select the criteria. In our example, the company will be using will be GB10. In the date range, select the year that you'd like to run the report for. In the ledger field, select the ledger that you'd like to run the report for. In our example, we will be sticking with legal. In the print selections, select yes if you would like to have a front page on the report showing you the query number, the log number and the date and time that the report was run. In the destination field will default to Excel. However, as I would like to view this in a PDF, I will select previous view. Once you're ready, click print. Once the report is finished running, let's open it and take a look. As you can see on the front page, our print selections are being shown with our file number, which is the log number, as well as the date and time that the report was printed. Moving on to the second page of the log, you can see that the report is showing a list of anomalies which will need to be cleared in order to close each of the accounting periods, month by month. We'll start with those appearing in January. The first few lines are telling us there are journals for purchase and sales invoices which are still in temporary status. These will need to be made final. To correct these, you will either need to go into the journal and change the status to final there, or on the final validation function. Moving on to the next anomaly we encounter, this is the period not closing fixed assets. In order to close an accounting period for a company, the period for a fixed assets context must be closed. You must complete this in the Fixed Assets module. After reviewing the log, the only other different type of anomaly in this report can be found in December. As you can see, there is a customer invoice that has not been posted. If your log has only listed one unposted invoice, you can post that from the respective entry screen. However, if your log has listed multiple invoices that have not been posted, you may want to consider using the invoice validation function or the invoice postings function, depending on if the invoices were entered from the purchasing and sales modules or from the APAR module respectively. No, the invoice not posted error may appear on your log as invalid supplier or customer invoice instead. Although the message is different, the requirement remains to complete the posting. Other anomalies you may encounter on your logs could include payments that have not been posted. For these, you can simply go into the payment receipts function and post. Entry pending validation. This means that your transaction has been posted, however, it has not been recorded on the general ledger. You will need to check your accounting task and batch server is running to resolve this issue. Another example would be a journal that is in an active simulation you will need to decide if you want to make these final, but like with the temporary journals, you cannot close a period with simulated entries. Other examples may include recurring journals not yet generated, which can be completed from the recurring entries function under the current processing submenu. One of the more common anomalies you may come across is the sign by default credit balance total debit balance this will be presented with an account number which is the incorrect balance sign set up. Go to the account and review this and amend accordingly. A 
another common anomaly is the currency by site number, balance unbalanced error. This is usually due to a prior year not being closed. You can resolve this by either doing a hard close from the fiscal year end function or by running the year end simulation function. Our final example is a transaction with the incorrect due date total, showing two totals which do not match. These can usually be resolved by running the entries resynchronizations. As a final note, we advise you to run the CLOPA report in close periods frequently. This way you will have fewer actions to complete when you finally have to complete your year end. This concludes our short video on running the CLOPA and the types of anomalies you may encounter in the log. Should you encounter any anomalies not mentioned, please contact your local customer support team. Thanks for watching. For additional training video content, visit Sage University. For UK announcements, alerts, blogs and more videos, visit Sage City.